1806. Mark, two minutes until airtime for this live show broadcast. The next time, Q will come with one minute until airtime on the Rice Sports Network. Stations, we're coming up on one minute until our time. One minute in five, four, three, two, mark. One minute stations, one minute until our time for this live show broadcast. Studios, when you hear, please start your archive recording. Coming up on 30 seconds until airtime on my mark. Mark, 30 seconds. Your next and final time cue will be with 15 seconds until airtime. Coming up on 15 seconds until airtime. Mark, 15 seconds stations. Have fun. The following is a Learfield presentation of the Rice Sports Network. <laughs> On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield, live from Acme Oyster House, welcome to the Mike Bloomgren Show. Acme Oyster House, life's more fun with seafood. The Mike Bloomgren Show is brought to you by The Parking Spot. We have airport parking covered. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716. Lighting up Rice University and Houston for over 100 years. <laughs> now, alongside Coach Bloomgren, here's the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Yes, yes, yes. How about that? Rice Owls victorious over the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. 42-41, a piece of cake, right? Uh, overtime dub this past Saturday, and uh, almost appropriate we uh, come back uh, from uh, Louisiana with some uh, good old uh, seafood here at uh, Acme Oyster House here, where the uh, big-voiced announcer guy just said, life's more fun with seafood. Has it behind me on a nice neon sign, and on the outside, it's painted on the uh, front of this magnificent building located in the Montrose area, specifically 1201 Westheimer. Before we get cranked up into everything, I'll remind you and say it again and again and again. Uh, programming reminder, next week, the next show is coming up Tuesday. So we will let you trick-or-treat and dress up and all that. And then we'll be back here Tuesday for the next Mike Bloomgren show. When's the next show? Tuesday. When's the next show? Tuesday. We'll say it a few times then. But you know, uh, if you're out here, I uh, usually have them on these Mondays, 7 until 8 p.m. But next Tuesday, November. Crazy. Uh, it was I'm a weird guy. It was a nice kind of day for me. I like these uh, anything to get rid of that 90-degree crud. Uh, but uh, it was uh, kind of gray, overcast, and it felt like a good uh, fall type of day. But Acme Oyster House, uh, such fine partners. Here's to Red Beans and Rice University. Acme Oyster House, a proud sponsor of Rice football. After the game, come join us for a fried seafood platter, shrimp po' boy, or a dozen char-grilled oysters. Acme, the best little oyster house in 
Texas. It's homecoming at Family's Weekend coming up on Saturday against the Charlotte 49ers. Uh, 1 o'clock is our glorious kickoff time coming up on Saturday. 12.30, our Houston Methodist pregame. Nate, Walter, Metco, and I, and Bob, and Ashley will have that broadcast for you uh, coming up on the Rice House Game Day app, ricehouse.com, and the Varsity Network app. We're also on the YouTube and Al's Facebook pages as well, or at least we are now. Hi, folks out there watching. Uh, you can get the uh, in the booth, or in this case, the uh, high table feed here with our guest on the show tonight, which feature, of course, we're able to book them again, even after that dramatic win. Uh, Dunleavy family head football coach Mike Moongren coming up next segment. And it's a segment for the big fellas. Uh, they have just walked in. We have uh, one pride of Katie. Uh, Ethan Onianwa coming on. Uh, fantastic uh, story behind him, how he got here. And just uh, uh, His play has been uh, really good for the Owls. And we have on the other side the left tackle, Clay Servant. We'll talk some soccer. We'll uh, talk some football. We'll talk uh, all things uh, around Richardson related. He's a DFW guy. And, of course, we have their uh, position coach, Sanders Davis, as well. Uh, this Owls uh, O-line uh, coming along uh, probably – not for me to say. We'll ask coach the coaches about that coming up in their segments, but one of their better uh, games of the season, if not the best, because of the uh, season high uh, in rushing against the uh, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. And taking on a Charlotte team, we'll preview uh, interim coach Pre Pete Rosamondo's team coming up in just a sec. You did not hear uh, yesterday, uh, Will Healy was relieved of his duties, but, and you know as well as I, Speaking of the choir, so to speak, that uh, that doesn't mean the team's coming in with any uh, less ability. In fact, they probably come up a little bit uh, more uh, inspired. And the Owls and 49ers have had some uh, close battles in the past. It's their fourth meeting. Um, one other tidbit off that Saturday game, uh, the first uh, – uh, first overtime game out of the 16 the Owls have played that had been decided by uh, one point. It came down to the final play of the game uh, in the Owls' 16 OT games, the most inside Conference USA. That was a big one for the Owls uh, this past Saturday. And a nice, cozy drive coming back here to the Bayou City. A lot to get to coming up next. We'll talk to head coach of the Rice Owls, Mike Bloomberg, coming up next back at Acme Oyster House. More of the Mike Bloomberg Show from Learfield. Hey, Oscar, Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar. I'm talking Spokes Oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char grill, a seafood platter, a po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come at me, bro. Not you. Back in Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. Buy the best for rest at Shoppers. Shoppers has the lowest prices on John Deere trackers. Don't leave money on the table with the best tracker at the best prices of the year. Shoppers makes it so easy with just a few clicks at our website. We dare you to compare. Go see our specials by Googling Shoppers and S-H-O-P-P-A-S. Build the tractor package of your dreams with our build it, price it, own it tool. And we'll deliver your John Deere tractor for free. The best for less at Shoppers. All things John Deere. We interrupt your top 40 hits to issue this alert from the Carbach Brewing Company. In our efforts to brew our distinct and popular Hopadillo IPA, we have unwittingly created a monster. A monster with an insatiable thirst. A monster that will not stop until it gets what it wants. An ice-cold Hopadillo IPA. Just like the one I'm holding in my hand. Bold. Flavorful. Dry hopped. Irresistible. <laughs> Sweet and merry! Hopadillo. Find it before it finds you. Bravely brewed in Texas by the Carbach Brewing Company. Owls fans, you may not think of yourself as an athlete, but everyday life is full of athletic feats. You bend, you reach, you lift, you twist until back, neck, or shoulder pain hits, which brings you to a stop. So whether you're an athlete or not, the Joint Chiropractic can help ease your pain and keep you on the active work. Visit any of our 40-plus Houston area locations or thejoint.com today to get your first consultation exam and adjust it for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic, the official chiropractor of Rice University Athletics. You're listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. 
Yes, Acme Oyster House again uh, Monday tonight and uh, next Tuesday, November 1st, our next show because of the owl scheduling and the way the days obviously line up. Uh, the Thursday game against UTEP next week. We'll worry about that next week, but uh, Tuesday is our next Mike Bloomgren show next week. But right now with uh, Dunleavy Family Head Football Coach for Rice Owls, Mike Bloomgren, boss, how are things? Things are good, man. Things are good. Yeah. Um, the... I was trying to think of some kind of movie analogy for that game. It was like one that this usually doesn't work because we know we both love our movies where you have a terrible beginning, but the most amazing ending, right? Yeah. I, I couldn't think of it because I, I like being picky with my movies, but how, how would you describe the euphoria, not only of the win, but just the uh, the weird nature of it? A W is a W, huh? Yeah, I think like what I'm going to lean on is I'm going to lean on the character of our team for continuing to fight the way they did, to find a way through, and, and just be so freaking gritty when – one side of the ball was falling down. You know, the defense, like, we could have went down 17 nothing. if Sean Fresh doesn't make that amazing pick and keep us in the game. And, you know, and, and then that would have been a that would have been a tough place. Like, 17 nothing's not where you want to be as a college football team. And uh, would we or could we have fought back? Absolutely, but it would have been harder. And so that was great. And then we uh, find a way to put one in the box, obviously get down to the one-yard line and, and put the ball on the ground, which is unacceptable, and we understand that. But uh, – Gosh, there was just so many things in the first half. You're like, we're, we're really close. And, and that was really the message at halftime. It was like, hey, guys, we have endured their best shot. We have to go play our kind of football for 30 minutes, and we'll find a way to win this thing, which I turned out to be wrong. We needed overtime to do it. But uh, but we did, you know, and, and that's a big deal to be able to fight that long. And the offense, what the offense did in the second half, I thought was so outstanding. They scored touchdowns on every drive in the second half, except for the two-minute when they had the ball with 30 seconds. And we had a fourth and one at midfield that we converted, and there was a call by the officials that was inaccurate, uh, but it cost us that drive. And so literally every drive we were able to, to keep it keep alive and, and do the things we do, the offense put it in the box. I mean, not score points, score touchdowns. And, and that's exactly what we needed to do. And Christian Van Sickle kicked that ball through the uh, uprights and the extra point. We needed every single one of them. So really thankful for our performance and thankful the defense could come up with a play when it mattered. I mean, they made the decision. They're going to go for two, and somebody was going to win the game on that play, and our defense uh, made a play, and we came out victorious. It's the fourth straight game coming down to the final wire. It started with that stretch uh, across town, but how did those other experiences lend to, even though there are different types of finishes, and none of them went overtime, but just being in that position before and under that kind of pressure, just game after game after game, and now the fourth time you, you've been in that spot. Yeah, JP, it feels like the National Football League where everything's <laughs> going to come down to a last drive. And uh, Gosh, we, we can win a game without doing that someday. It would be really nice. And I know we can do that if we play our game for 60 minutes on both on all three phases. If we do that, we're going to be just fine. Uh, but, hey, you know what? Like they, The job is to score one more point than your opponent. And once again, these guys got it done. And it was some unbelievable individual performances. I look back and – Think about the day Luke McCaffrey had, and that was just, uh, gosh, 202 total yards, I think 171 receiving, 31 on the ground, you know, in the Wildcat stuff, and three total touchdowns. The fact that our offensive line imposed their will the way that they did, moved people, uh, it would have been a net of 300 rushing minus a sack. So there's just some really good steps forward there. Uh, and it's it's hard to talk about an offense without talking about T.J. McMahon, right? The quarterback, too much credit, too much blame. Well, he was really big in the second half. He was big with his arm, he was big with his timing, and he was big with his legs. And so you look at what he did, and to have a QBR over 90, I think he was the fourth-ranked QBR this this week in the nation, and uh, he's on the Manning, Manning uh, watch list, which is really cool. Um, the way that they award things, like they pick eight quarterbacks each week, and he was one of them this week. So a cool honor for him. And it's really a testament to our team sticking by him when he didn't have a good performance the week before. All we did was encourage TJ, like, hey, man, we need your best. And uh, it may not have been his best in the first half, but the second half was pretty dang close. And I don't know if you know this yet, but I'm starting my own award, uh, the uh, Conference Player of the Week, and it goes this first week to Luke McCaffrey. Uh, the way it should. He, it should. he should have gotten that. Sorry, Conference USA folks. We like you, but uh, you missed one here. Swing, big swing and a miss. McCaffrey, over 170 yards receiving. You mentioned rushing touchdown in addition to two receiving. Uh, what did he do after Rosner had the great game the week before? And, and, and McCaffrey had been good, but he just he just explodes and goes goes off in this one. 
Yeah, one of those ranking systems, uh, I don't know what it is, one of these websites had him as the third best receiver in the nation this week from his production. And, wow. you know, I think that's outstanding. And and I think it's very, very warranted. Like you look at the uh, the shallow cross that he caught for a touchdown. I mean, that's a five-yard catch and run, but he's in the right place, catches the ball, sticks it in the box, and that's great. But then you think about the, the shallow one that he caught and turns into a 66-yard gain where he's bouncing off tacklers. That's the kind of thing where you're like, golly, Luke's really special. Or even the one in the first half where TJ just takes a chance and uh, gives him a chance down the field with two defenders there. Luke comes down with it, makes sure he gets both feet in, so it would have been good in the NFL too. Uh, so that's really cool. And then, yeah, put him at Wildcat. He gets uh, the first run for four yards. We give him a reverse, and uh, that goes for like 10 or 12. And then, man, whatever it was, a 17-yard touchdown on – on the power and some good blocking, no doubt, but Luke just being special and finding a way to get to the pylon. And he also had a a team high 64 yard touchdown run from TJ in that game, a high of the season. Uh, He's got that threat. We don't don't talk about it too much, but he's always got that in the back pocket. Doesn't he? What what makes him so special to be able to pull pull off a play like that? Yeah. I think number one, like people sleep on TJ as an athlete. Like he is a really good athlete. He runs incredibly well. And uh, he runs with group one, you know, which, which is the fast guys. That's the receivers and the DBs. And he puts himself in that group and, and pushes himself all summer long. And that's what gives him the ability to do that. Now, I, I don't know if you talked about it on this play or not. And I don't know if you've seen many of the replays, but the, the effort that Cam Montgomery gives on that play might be, uh, might be my favorite play uh, because I just love that he goes through the hole on a great fake. And then he catches TJ. And, like, TJ's running, like, four or five something. Like, TJ's rolling. And Cameron, the way he closes and makes that shield to make sure he can get in the end zone, this selfless play that that is, that's everything that Rice football is about right now. And speaking of Cam, he was a part of that balanced running game. Uh, you had a season high on the ground. Uh, and how about Juma stepping up, too? I'm asking like three questions in one, but just having two or three guys come in there. And, and Ari still figured in there, but um, – Talk about the balance of the running game. Yeah, the balance of the running game did not go exactly how we planned, right? We kind of narrowed things down from a scheme standpoint last week, and we really, from a rep standpoint, put it all on Cameron and Ari. And uh, Ari just did not start out the way he wanted to or the way we wanted him to, so we ended up giving Cameron a little more run. Uh, we've got special packages, as we've talked about before, for Dean Connors. And so really what that left us was that left us Uriah and Juma, and we had really a lot of confidence in Juma to be able to do the pass protection. We had a lot of confidence in Uriah to be able to do the short yards and goal line. So we kind of divided and conquered with their roles. And I don't know, um, gosh, I'm so proud of Juma for the way he worked on the scout team all week, for the coaching he's taken in-game from CJ, as well as taking drills from the practice field to the game and seeing those great results. So uh, Jim is a cool story because he's always the king of Mudita at our place. You know, he's always a great teammate. He's always on every special team. But for him to jump into a game and and arguably have his best in-game performance since the last game of 2018 is pretty cool. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of Jim. Mike Bloomgren show here at Acme Oyster House on the defensive side of things, uh, linebacking core. Uh, Meyer Morris was out, but Andrew always stepped up with a career high uh, six tackles. It's not just easy to go in there and just get those tackles. Uh, he roamed around and made a lot of plays, and Chris Conti, too, a career high tackles. Yeah, I, I mean, Conti's the one who I feel like every week we're talking about. Like, yeah. man, another nine, another ten tackle game, whatever it is, and, and just making great strides and doing great things in coverage, too. That's what always goes unsung in the, in the stat sheet is what Chris is doing but uh one of my favorite defensive plays in this game is chris hitting the passers he released the ball on uh, one of the ones when when he's in the end zone we actually had it as one of the predators today because it was just uh you know makes you not want to play quarterback against the rice owls when you see 10 quarterback hits and some of them looking like that so really cool there and then always stepped in and, and really did a nice job he's he's a consistent performer on special teams he actually had a big tackle on a kickoff as well in this game but great to see him in there at linebacker and, and playing fast and, and doing some really cool things. Let's talk about the guys on the show tonight. And a perfect segue with the next question, the offensive line leading to a lot of that uh, rushing success. Uh, and you got the, the, the two bookends there with Clay Serve and Ethan on the on on the show. Tell us a, a little more about them. Yeah, first off, talking about the offensive line's performance, you know, in this last game. I thought it was great. And I thought the strain in the run game, I think the way we moved people, it gave those backs a chance, and the backs went and did their job. So that was a lot of fun. And then to not give up 
a sack and a drop back protection. We gave up one sack, but it was on a naked where somebody was unblocked and made a good play. <laughs> so the offensive line just did a heck of a job. And really proud of Coach Davis, really proud of that group, the way that uh, that they performed. Because they're, they're a group that has been much talked about, much maligned this year. And, and now, like, they're starting to get a couple guards back. And you're really able to see what this offensive line can do. And I expect that to continue to grow. Uh, I, I expect it to be an even better performance this week. But those two tackles in particular, you know, Clay Servin has been our starting left tackle here forever, right? Like, for as long as I've been here, he's been the left tackle we wanted in the game. And then, uh, you know, just the growth. And, and now he's in the NBA program, and we're going to get a chance to have him back another year. Like, I couldn't wow. be happier about that. You know, like, he's second quad master in the NBA. And I, I believe Clay's going to have a real shot to play in the National Football League, and I'm fired up for him uh, when that day comes. Now, I would say this, too. I'm not sure there's anybody on our team that has grown more from last year to this year, uh, counting spring ball, counting fall camp, and the leadership. Uh, what he's doing is really cool. Uh, and then Ethan is also going to play in the NFL at one point, I really believe. I think he is an uber-talented kid. That It's hard to believe he's only a redshirt freshman. Some of the things he's doing on film is, is awesome, and as he continues to get more confident and comfortable in the scheme and his ability to, to understand the technique that's applicable and to understand exactly what to do, he's only – I mean, the sky is the limit for Ethan Aniawa. So uh, those are two guys that are going to be a lot of fun to watch in the coming years for sure. And a great night with the uh, old, old linemen of the past here. A, a good good theme here. Yeah, man, getting these guys back, oh, man. man. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, Coach. We'll uh, enjoy the grub. We'll come back later and talk about those 49ers. Sounds great. Thank you. Dunleavy Family and Football Coach for Rice Owls, Mike Bloomgren. Coming up next, we have the aforementioned Ethan Onianwa coming up. This is back in more, the Mike Bloomgren Show at Act Oyster House from Learfield. Build it, price it, own it. Shop as in John Deere makes it as easy as one, two, three to get the John Deere tractor of your dreams. Number one, go to shoppers at sfstractor.com. Select the John Deere tractor you want, add the attachments you need. Number two, select your terms. See the price along with monthly payments and apply for financing. Number three, buy your John Deere tractor from shoppers and shoppers will deliver it for free. Shoppers makes it that easy to purchase your John Deere tractor. Build it, price it, own it. Only at shoppers. All things John Deere. Double Tree by Hilton Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites is the preferred hotel for anybody visiting the medical center, the museum district, or Rice University. We offer the largest suites in the medical center, complete with full kitchens, and our full-service restaurant and outdoor pool will make your stay complete. We look forward to having you experience the Double Tree by Hilton Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites soon. And if you do recruit rate or 10 or more rooms, don't forget to call 713-528-7744. That's 713-528-7744. Howdy Homemade Ice Cream is here. Howdy is an ice cream shop in Katy, Texas that makes ice cream in-house and has a unique mission to employ individuals that are differently abled. Stop by and enjoy some ice cream. With every scoop you buy, you help support employment for special needs. Coming to Rise Athletics venues in the fall. Houston, we have a cocktail. All hands can cocktails are made with six times distilled craft vodka at a sturdy 10% ABV to ensure you never have to sacrifice the quality of your provisions. Now available in six natural flavors, including raspberry lemonade, ruby red grapefruit, cherry limeade, cranberry and vodka soda, and vodka tonic classic. Follow the adventure on Instagram at, at Drink All Hands and try these car strength cocktails for yourself for the next game. All hands, damn fine cocktails. Proud sponsor of Rice Athletics. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you got to park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. Highlighting the owls on the gridiron. Welcome back to the Mike Bloomgren Show. 
Yes, indeed. Here at Acme Oyster House, uh, 1201 uh, Westheimer. It is a great spot. Remember, Tuesday next week, our next show before that Thursday game against uh, UTEP. And out there that game and coming up this Saturday, as he has been all season, it'll be uh, number 78 of our Rice House, Ethan Oneyanwa. How are you doing, young man? Good. How are you doing? Can I complain? Yeah, you got uh, the big Ethan uh, cheering section out there. So... <laughs> First things first, uh, before we talk about your play this season, uh, we're getting Ethan on first because he has a uh, class to get to. But in true Rice fashion, it's a uh, unique class. So tell us a little about this film class that you have coming up. Yes, it is. Yeah, I have a class that's analyzing science fiction and movies and just like how it relates to society. Yeah. Really interesting class. All right, so what, what time frame? All, like, decades? Or yeah, anything? all decades from the... From from the sixties all the way to to present day in the cellar. All right, do you have a yeah. favorite one so far? Uh, probably um, Space Odyssey. Okay, yeah. it's two thousand one. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Kubrick, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he he was kind of a a weird director. So he yeah. he throws some weird stuff at. What's your other favorite movie? Like pre film class, like just uh, what, what do you have a, a favorite movie? Um. I'll probably say in the cellar. I mean, it was a class. It was a movie that we went over in class, but it's always been. A favorite movie of mine, just how just just, just looking at how like technology and also just like can compare to the human relationships and everything. Yeah, yeah. And, and after our talk this summer, which we'll reference a lot here, that that doesn't surprise me uh, at all. But talk about your play this year. Your your first. I know you had a couple of snaps last season, able to maintain that red shirt, but uh, you, you went in there and you're expecting that, but. Kind of, kind of evaluate what you thought this year, uh, your first full time season here. Well, I feel like I've grown, but there's still a lot of room to grow. Um, it's it's been a great, a really good season, but like I'm I'm, I'm a young person, I still have a, a lot of room to grow. But luckily, with all the vets that are surrounding me, like Isaac Korkowski, Clay Servin, Shea Baker, I, I I can reach the potential that I know I have. You were really honest with me uh, when we talked. I forget which portion of the summer it was, but just the brotherhood uh, about it. How, speak to that, how those of us that, that haven't played, like we, we don't really understand that as much, but what's that been like for you? It's, it's been amazing. It's just as soon as you stop walking through the doors that you, you can feel it. You can feel how much everyone cares for each other, how much everyone wants to grow and improve with each other. And it's not, it's not like a doggy dog world. Everyone wants to improve. Everyone wants to be great together. Bioengineering major still, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So your dad was is an electrical engineer. He's uh, in oil, right? Yes. Uh, and your mom's a pharmacist. So uh, how did those blend together for you to choose uh, bioengineering? And what was your, uh, I guess, motivation for that? Well, I've always been interested in medicine. Um, yeah, ever since that, ever since I was a kid, I always loved going to work with my, with my mom because she was a pharmacist. She always had, she had her own business for a while, and I always loved going to work with her. And also just with my dad because he used to work on an oil rig and he always came back telling me stories. So like just like kind of like melding the two, just like just combining the two of engineering and also just like medicine was always something that has interested interested me and which is why I chose bioengineering. And didn't you tell me if I remember this right, uh, you wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon at one point or has, has that changed in the last few months or what would you no, think? That's still something I want to do. I want to go to NFL and also after after some time become an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, yeah, just that, that, no big deal, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. Big have, have you met uh, Dr. Winston yet? I have not. Okay, yeah, former had opportunity to play in the NFL, but he he's a doctor for a way long wow. time. Yeah, he's a, he's a great great guy, great man. So, uh, top twelve percent in your class at Cinco Ranch. Uh, you had a lot of uh, Ivy interest, uh, Vanderbilt, but really. Um, struck me why you chose Rice, not just because it was a local school. I know that helped, but just uh, discuss why, why you chose to join us on South Main. Well, one, because of just like the combination of athletic and also academic opportunities. Um, so just talking to the coaches, like I know that I can reach my best potential here to be because, both, because both athletic and also academics are, have always been a priority for me. I want to be great in both, both aspects. Plus also just the community and family that's here. But being be so close has like allowed me to go to a lot of the games and interact with a lot of the players before I, I before I actually sign any papers here and just like seeing how much they actually care for each other. Just going back to the brotherhood we've talked about has just really showed me on how much like I want to be at Rice, how much I want to be part of the Rice family.
what's your favorite moment of the season so far? Um, I would probably say the the after the after after game celebrations. It's, yeah, it's it's really great to see how much uh, how much like hard work pays off after a game and just like everyone dancing, everyone partying. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. What have you learned most about yourself here? This not just this year, like I asked you earlier, but just since uh, being a big uh, collegian and, and whatnot. Probably just um, not relying only on myself. Just like, like like we've talked about, there's a brotherhood and just like there's a family that's there to support you. And just like being able to like know that, that there, there, there are people that are there for you, that are there to help you both like academic guys athletically and also just like in any, any other aspect of life is really reassuring and has helped me grow a lot since freshman year. Were you a Texans fan growing up? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any uh, NFL, in, like obviously NFL interest in playing, but just any favorite linemen you watch? Uh, this technique here, I imagine more on the tackle side, uh, like any, anybody you watch that, that sticks out? or um, No, particularly, but I do like watching the, the Texans and also the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Offensive line, just to see how they work and play. Yeah, that makes Clay and some others here in the audience uh, pretty happy. Uh, what other sports did you play growing up? Um, mainly football, but I did throw a shot put in high school. Okay, what did yeah. you throw? Um, I I threw probably my father was like 40, 40, 48. 40, okay, yeah. That sounds good. I don't, I don't have a huge uh, frame of reference on that. Uh, so Halloween coming up. Uh, what was your favorite Halloween costume growing up? Uh, young, little Ethan, only on one. It's a tie between Spider-Man and Batman. Okay. Yeah. I, I was, I'm, I'm, a huge, I'm a huge fan of Spider-Man, and also Batman was, just, was always something that I, I was like growing up. All right. Uh, <laughs> pretend Coach Straub isn't listening. Uh, do you have a favorite Halloween candy? that you might partake in, wink, wink, mm. coming up? I'll probably say, like, Hershey Kisses. Man. Yeah, huge chocolate, huge chocolate guy. There you go. Yeah. I, knew, I knew we'd get along well. <laughs> I knew we'd get along. Uh, discuss the rest of the season uh, with you guys, uh, four and three. Uh, what, what do you need to keep doing and uh, still improve on the rest, not just your unit, but, but as a whole, now that you talked about those celebrations, but you want to keep this thing going for more of those yeah. celebrations. So what do you have to keep doing? To continue to like work together better because every time that we work well, things things turn out well. So just continue to like hammer on the bigger things, just like be able to like move the D line and just be able to create those gaps have or have, have been our priority. But like if we continue to improve on that, our our game is going to explode and it's going to be amazing what we can do. And then on a personal level, just like technique and also just like understanding things because I I've I've grown, but I still have so much more room to grow and so much to learn from all the amazing people that are around me. And speaking of, one last question. Tell us something we may not know about Clay Servant, but he gets equal time on you coming up too. So, Well, Clay, is in, for, for a while, I mean, he's incredibly flexible and fast. Like, I, I don't know how he does it. Like, I, I see him do pull-ups, and like, I have no idea how he does it. And just all the stretches that he does, it's just you, like, you, would even, like, you would even know he was a lineman if he first yeah. saw him. Yeah, yeah. Flexible for a big man. Huh? Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, Ethan, we know you got to get. Uh, thanks for coming out. Enjoy some more of that grub. And uh, can't wait to do more of these over the years. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Ethan on the honor of a rice owl. As his big hand swallows my tiny hand up here. Okay. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we'll have the aforementioned uh, Mr. Flexible Clay Servant coming up here back at Agni Oyster House here. The Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. Hey, Oscar, Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar. We're talking spokes oysters for Acton Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char grilled, a seafood platter, a po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come at me, bro. Not you. Acton Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. Double Tree by Hilton Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites is the preferred hotel for anybody visiting the medical center, the museum district, or Rice University. We offer the largest suites in the medical center, complete with full kitchens, and our full-service restaurant and outdoor pool will make your stay complete. We look forward to having you experience the Double Tree by Hilton Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites soon. And if you do a group rate or 10 or more rooms, don't forget to call 713-528-7744. That's 713-528-7744. 
it's JP here to tell you that, yes, there's more Rice Owls content out there for you to consume. Subscribe and download the official podcast of Rice Athletics, Rice Owls Insider. Rice Owls Insider provides a unique new look at a variety of head coaches, players, and other integral voices inside the Rice Athletics Department. Plus, you can find archived coaches shows as well. For the best in Rice Owls content, subscribe to Rice Owls Insider, the official podcast of Rice Athletics. Available on Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Another season of women's and men's college sports is underway. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show, live at Acme Oyster House. Here again, the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Yes, 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 you know it back here at Acme Oyster House. Uh, usually every Monday of the game week, but a uh, reminder, next week, uh, game's on Thursday. So we adjust. It's on uh, Tuesday next week, our Mike Bloomgren Show. Uh, we have number 71 on our Rice Owls, uh, the pride of Richardson. Uh, Texas, a former Pierce, J.J. Pierce Mustang. It is uh, Clay Servant. How are you doing, young man? I am doing great. How are you? Cannot complain whatsoever. Got a lot of uh, old linemen here uh, in the in the house. Um, so discuss this season. And first off, before I forget, Coach got on me last week for not answering the return volley. Give us something on Ethan that we might not know. As we, <laughs> he, he, uh, he, I mean, he was nice to you. Yeah, Talked he about was. Your, your flexibility he was. gave you some positive stuff. So uh, obviously uh, everybody thinks a lot of Ethan, but what, what's something that even though we talked to him for a few minutes here, we might not know. Yeah, so yeah, something we were just talking about. Uh, I came in. I was 17 in fall camp. I was born August 8th. The only person, uh, to my knowledge, who was younger than me coming in as a freshman was Ethan, born August 16th. Uh, so that is a little fun fact that, you know, coming in, although he is huge and enormous, he was the youngest, came in at 17 for his uh, first collegiate fall camp. So when you come in that young, uh, I'm blanking on the dish, 9-6-A, Richard Pierce, whatever, I've changed it probably a few times since then. Yep. Um, it's different. Hey, newsflash, it's harder in college, so you're, you're just into that, but then you play relatively quickly. What, what did you do so well back then, and what has Ethan done so well now to assimilate so, so quickly? Uh, that's, that's a tough question. Um, you're right, the speed is just on a whole other level, and uh, the speed of the game as well as the size and the strength of your opponents. When I was in high school, I was 17 years old, going up against maybe a 15, 16, 17-year-old kid. Now... At 18 playing, I was going up against 22-year-olds, 23-year-olds. Um, so the, the gap was just insane. What helped me was just falling back on technique and falling back on our scheme. Um, when you do that and you're in, the right, the, you're in the right spot, really that's just the best you can hope for. Uh, and uh, everything else kind of just comes into play. And when you have you know, just really the great offensive minds, of Coach Bloomgren and now Coach Davis uh, coming in as our offensive line coach, they kind of help you with everything else. But once you get the scheme down, that's really the most important part. You uh, gave a big fist pump talking about being a, a Cowboys fan. They've had some uh, pretty good linemen. You're probably a little too young for Larry Allen, right? But uh, Tyron Smith left tackle for a while. Yeah. But did you, you emulate him or some other NFL Lineman or <laughs> yeah, I mean that is a uh, that's a hard guy to uh, try to replicate what he yeah. does. But yeah, Larry Allen uh, watched all of his highlight tapes I could find. Uh, really, just you know Wayne Johnson, even though he's uh, an eagle, um, yeah. you know just trying to trying to soak in as much knowledge from some of these NFL greats uh, is is always something you know, that we're looking to do. Uh, we, we luckily have a lot of film on you know just NFL players, so. If we're uh, ever bored, that's something that we do. We have a lot of games we can just look back on. Mm -hmm. What was the difference for the line this week to to make that improvement? Coach mentioned that gelling and and taking that step. I think the the biggest step that we had was really just our consistency. So inside zone this week was something that we really focused on, and uh, we tried to 
kind of dial back some of our schemes and say, hey, like let's let's run the stuff that we're good at and let's practice what we're good at, what we expect them to do, and also be prepared for what they may not do. And I think the starting five especially, and then also uh, you know some of our other guys like Isaac Klarkowski, uh, Trey Phillippe who came in, um, played tight end early in the season and switched over to guard. Everybody was locked in from the starting five to the uh, rotating guys with really just the scheme, what we had to do and what we did on the field. And uh, we tried to practice and emulate the game as best as we could, and it it, uh, it showed. Like a bunch of other folks in the audience, you're a Rice grad econ uh, major, right? Yes, yes. So uh, economics is fascinating to me in the different podcasts you'll hear, but now on the NBA side of things, uh, explain how those go together and uh, what was really challenging about that major and now getting your MBA. Uh, yeah, so luckily a lot of the uh, finance, the finance classes, accounting, uh, those have, I had some carryover from my economics courses in undergrad. Uh, the hard part for me with economics, really just the conceptual side of, you know, the math wasn't as much calculus. It was more uh, kind of fitting in some of the theoretical sides of math with economics and with some of the graphs, uh, really just having a principle, seeing how we can manipulate it to uh, get a decided outcome. Um, so kind of learning that thought process with my undergrad has really helped in my master classes uh, thus far. Uh, only finished my first quad master, so still still early, um, but so far it's been, uh, it's been going well and I'm enjoying it. You're the Iron Man of the offensive line. Uh, you lead the offense with 32 straight. It'll be 33 straight coming up here uh, Saturday afternoon. In that time, has there been one favorite stretch of games or one game or one moment that stands out the best? <laughs> That's a hard question. That's a hard question. I'm known for my hard questions. Clay. Come on. <laughs> I would say, I mean, you know, the generic answer. Uh, my most you know favorite game is the next one. You know, that that Tom Brady, Tom Brady quote. Uh, I will say the uh, the La Tech game last year uh, is is one that I, I think I'll remember for a long time, um, just because how far how hard we fought. Uh, even though, you know, unfortunately we had those two overtime losses last year. We we weren't bowl eligible. We weren't fighting for a conference championship. Everybody still came together and fought, and we had a uh, I think a, a ten point uh, comeback in the fourth quarter, and we found a way to win on our senior night in our last game of the season so that was that was really awesome when's the last time you played soccer uh <laughs> when we were in the bubble um you know the rice women's team will sometimes practice in there so there'll be a stray ball here and there i'll uh, get some get some touches in but last time i actually played was my senior year uh, of high school uh, we were you know pretty pretty good team made it uh, f- to the fourth round of uh, playoffs and uh, yeah you know unfortunately uh once I kind of put on some of the weight, uh, running around all, all that much, uh, it became a lot harder. But yeah, that's, you're a keeper, right? I was, yeah. But before the uh, way back, I uh, actually played like center mid and a little bit of defense. So I, I, I played everywhere. And then yeah, switched to uh, goalkeeper, probably seventh or eighth grade, and then played all the way through high school. I remember us talking about this last year, but uh, you played soccer with. Only the best college basketball player uh, going now, Drew Timmy, yes. who also was uh, in the Richardson. Where he got a, was he an Eagle or he was he at Pierce? He was at Pierce. He yeah. was at yeah. Pierce. Yeah, so same, uh, same high school. But but you both chose different sports too. So right. do you have any contact with him? I don't want to pretend or presume you're best friends or anything. But. Uh, no, we we have. Uh, you know, I'll I'll try to wish him luck during the season, and he'll do the same. You know, we both know being D one athletes how hectic it gets. So it, it's hard sometimes to keep in touch. Uh, but that is, you know, uh, a guy, he was in the grade below me, uh, you know, a, okay. a, a great competitor and uh, yeah, really just uh, a childhood friend who I hope to stay in contact with. He can play. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And I, I wish him the best uh, of luck this season and I hope, uh, you know, that it goes well and that he has a, a good draft and uh, we'll be able to play in the next level. All right, you mentioned earlier, jokingly, somewhat uh, putting on that weight, but uh, favorite Halloween candy and costume? Ooh, okay. Candy, I'll probably have to go with a, a Kit Kat um, or a Reese's. Yeah, there, there's so many, so many different variations now, but those are probably the two classics. And a favorite costume? 
growing up, I think I was always a cowboy. You know, had those cowboy boots and one of those uh, <laughs> orange orange tip revolvers. Uh, the six shooter. Yeah, the six shooter exactly. So I think that was you know I probably recycled that two or three times. Uh, so I think I have to go with that. Okay, probably don't fit you now. No, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, probably don't do that now. Hey, thanks for the time. Uh, get back to the grub, and I uh, appreciate you. Yep. Keep it up. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you back next year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, stay tuned. Join that's it's Clay Silver. We'll have their uh, O-line coach, Sanders Davis, coming uh, up here to the high table back here at Acme Oyster House. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. Build it, price it, own it. Go online and see Shoppers and John Deere's new way to get a John Deere tractor just the way you want it. Google shop as John Deere and let your John Deere tractor story begin. Build the tractor you want with the attachments you need to get your work done. Price it. No hidden costs and financing options available for any budget. Own it. And shoppers will deliver your John Deere tractor. Build it. Price it. Own it. It's shoppers' new way to get the John Deere tractor you want your way. Shoppers. All things John Deere. Houston. We have a cocktail. All hands canned cocktails are made with six times distilled craft vodka at a sturdy 10% ABV to ensure you never have to sacrifice the quality of your provisions. Now available in six natural flavors, including raspberry lemonade, ruby red grapefruit, cherry limeade, cranberry, and vodka soda. Vodka Tonic Classic. Follow the adventure on Instagram at, at Drink All Hands and try these bar strength cocktails for yourself for the next game. All hands, damn fine cocktails. Proud sponsor of Rice Athletics. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you gotta park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. We interrupt your top 40 hits to issue this alert from the Carbach Brewing Company. In our efforts to brew our distinct and popular Hoppadillo IPA, we have unwittingly created a monster. A monster with an insatiable thirst. A monster that will not stop until it gets what it wants. An ice-cold Hoppadillo IPA. Just like the one I'm holding in my hand. Bold. Flavorful. Dry hopped. Irresistible. <laughs> Sweet and merry! Hoppadillo. Find it before it finds you. Bravely brewed in Texas by the Carbach Brewing Company. Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com for Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. You're listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. Yes, yes, yes. And we have O line coach Sanders Davis joining us here at the high table. Yes, yes, indeed. Remember, next show coming up next Tuesday instead of Monday. It'll come Monday, but uh, we'll be here. I'll be at Rice uh, Basketball. We'll have uh, the next Mike Bloomgren show here next Tuesday. Coach? Our things. Things are great, man. Great, uh, great team win this week, and uh, we're ready for the next one. Guys have been working incredibly hard. Had a great practice today, so I'm I'm really excited about moving forward. You like the bus trips a little bit more, especially after a win to roll back in. Seems like we get back a little sooner. Oh uh, yeah, it was pretty good. It was smooth sailing, really smooth yeah. sailing. Got to got to stop at a gas station on the way, so we got to load up on some snacks. <laughs> You know, O line, O line coach, got to get some snacks in. So it was good. Yeah. You would not look, know it looking at uh, Coach Davis, uh, former uh, college center at Dartmouth. Um, I know we, we've talked about this in past interviews, but how did your time in the Ivy League prep you with coaching at Rice? So I, I think it just it gives you a, a, a reference point. Like it, you, you understand what these guys are going through. Uh, the demands on them are so high academically, the demands of them are so high. Uh, on the football field, and I think it can be really easy to lose sight uh, of how important both of those things are to these guys uh, if you're not really tuned into it. And so uh, to live that life, you know what those guys are going through. You know what the challenges are. You're able to help them. Um, you know, hey, here's how I approached it. Here's how I handled these things that, that, that I experienced that are really similar to what they are going through. And so um, I think it just it helps me be in tune to what, what, 
what their needs are and what their, their difficulties might be throughout a week. Speak to the unit. You had Shea Baker playing inside, mostly at center, but these two guys that have been on here on the outside, and you get the Johns back at the guards this past week, but uh, Trey Falupi's mixed in there, and you, you've had a lot of moving parts, and I know getting a, a consistent unit going, you have to have the same guys, and it looks like you had that Saturday, but just on the season on a whole, what, what have you liked and what have you seen for improvement? So I, I think I think this season, especially at our position, speaks volumes to, to Coach Bloomgren and how we prepared this roster and this team. Uh, you know, we're, we just went into our seventh game, and that was our sixth offensive line combination, you know, and I challenge you to find another, another team in the country that's having to go through that many combinations at O-line, um, but I think it speaks, it speaks to how we built that room and how we've, how we've recruited and how we've prepared guys and, and really developed everybody in the room and not just focused on a few uh, I think it speaks volumes to how hard these guys work. They work incredibly hard. Um, you know, for a guy to go out one week that might not have gotten as many reps the previous week, and, and now he's starting, uh, and, and they've done a fantastic job. Guys completely changing positions. Uh, Trey Phillippe is, and Isaac Klarkowski, those are, those are great, uh, you know, examples. It's, it's a lot different. The closer you get to the ball, the faster the game moves. And so, Whereas a tackle is having to worry about a certain set of things. When you move into guard, there's a whole other set of, of, of issues and different techniques and the speed of, of pass protection happens quicker. And for him to be able to, or those guys to be able to make those transitions is, is huge. And so um, I, I love these guys, man. I think they love each other. They are all bought in. Like it is, it's incredible to hear them talk to each other right now uh, in terms of motivating and challenging and coaching each other. Most of the times when I'm out on the field and I want to go coach somebody, Clay Servin, Shea Baker, they're beating me to the punch, you know. And so when you got that happening in a in a room, especially in a line room, um, consistency is really important. But it allows you to overcome those issues that we that we've had um, throughout the year. So I feel great about them. You might not be here if you did not send a tweet to another <laughs> coach on the show tonight. Uh, fascinating. One of my favorite stories. How. Uh, you you just take it from there as you were. You th I, I remembered part of it, and you filled in the blanks for me. How you uh, kind of not only ended up here, but got to know Coach Bloomberg. Yeah. So the long story short was I, I started as a as a high school coach in Louisiana at my alma mater, and I was you know went, becoming a coach and studying uh, everything I could about the position. And I came across this this DVD, this Cool Clinic DVD that my my old boss had given me. Uh, and it was Coach Bloomgren speaking at the Cool Clinic about gap scheme double teams and. Uh, I loved, I loved it. I thought it was awesome. I thought he was a great teacher. I thought his guys played incredibly hard, and so I started studying everything that I could that they were doing at Stanford at the time. And uh, I, I was going on a vacation to visit some friends uh, close to that area, and I realized how close I was going to be to Stanford like a day before. And so I, I just got into Twitter. I didn't really realize how it worked, and I sent him this public message, basically saying, "Hey, can I come by?" Uh, I want to come visit and talk with you if I can. And uh, he, he responded. He said, yeah, come on by. And I show up, you know, with a notepad of all these different questions. He spends a whole day with me, which not many coaches would do. Uh, so that speaks volumes to who he is. Uh, and then the rest kind of went from there. I saw him at a clinic the next year uh, when he got – and then again the following year he got this job. I came to visit. Uh, and then when he had an opportunity to open up, he gave me a call, and, and I took it. Immediately, I took it, and so I wanted to learn from the best, and and I got that opportunity to do so, and so I definitely hit the jackpot. I think there's a little bit of a fairy tale story, you know, on that one, but um, I'm incredibly lucky uh, for him and all he's done for me and for my family. My sister works here, you know, which is really cool to be able to work with her every day. Um, so this is a really cool place to be, and I owe a lot to Coach Bloom. As the old Paul Harvey would say, now you know the rest of the story here. Uh, rest of the season, how uh, a little more uh, past that halfway point, um, and not just Charlotte specifically, but uh, you, you go against some uh, good fronts the rest of the way uh, here this season, don't you? Yeah, we do. We do. And uh, I think if these guys continue to practice the way that they've been practicing, they keep playing with the consistency that they've been playing with. There's not a team uh, – on the upcoming schedule that we should not dominate up front. I have a lot of faith in these guys. Uh, I think they're, they are locked in. They're absolutely tuned in. If, I mean, if you just saw practice today, man, like it would be, we just came off a great win. 
Uh, you know, we know the next team we're playing doesn't have a great record right now, and there's been a little turmoil in their program, and it would be really easy to just say, you know what, we should take this one off. I think we got this one. And that is not the mentality at all. Uh, they're practicing harder. They're coaching each other harder. They're picking they're picking their last game apart and, and tuning up what they need to work on, even in, in pre-practice today. You know, hey, this guy was working on exactly what we talked about he needed to work on, and to come out to practice today as a coach and see them, uh, you know, working on those things on their own lets you know how in tune they are and, and, and that the sky is absolutely the limit for them. So uh, I have no concerns moving forward. <laughs> hey, thanks for the time always on and off mic educating me, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you Appreciate for having it. it. Sanders Davis, Al's offensive line coach. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we'll wrap up the show previewing those Charlotte 49ers with Coach Bloomgren back at the mic. Back at Acme Oyster House here. This is the Mike Mungren Show from Learfield. Owls fans, you may not think of yourself as an athlete, but everyday life is full of athletic feats. You bend, you reach, you lift, you twist until back, neck, or shoulder pain hits, which brings you to a stop. So whether you're an athlete or not, the Joint Chiropractic can help ease your pain and keep you on the active work. Visit any of our 40-plus Houston area locations or thejoint.com today to get your first consultation exam and adjustment for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic, the official chiropractor of Rice University Athletics. Howdy Homemade Ice Cream is here. Howdy is an ice cream shop in Katy, Texas that makes ice cream in-house and has a unique mission to employ individuals that are differently abled. Stop by and enjoy some ice cream. With every scoop you buy, you help support employment for special needs. Coming to Rise Athletics venues in the fall. Hey, Oscar, Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar. We're talking Spokes Oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char grilled, a seafood platter, a po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come at me, bro. Not you. Acme Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. Hey, it's JP here to tell you that, yes, there's more Rice House content out there for you to consume. Subscribe and download the official podcast of Rice Athletics, Rice Owls Insider. Rice Insider provides a unique new look at a variety of head coaches, players, and other integral voices inside the Rice Athletics Department. Plus, you can find archived coaches shows as well. For the best in Rice House content, subscribe to Rice Owls Insider, the official podcast of Rice Athletics, available on Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Highlighting the owls on the gridiron. Welcome back to the Mike Bloomgren Show. Yes, yes, yes. Wrapping it up here. I've not uh, said it again. Thank you all again for coming out. But just a great spot. Uh, football, baseball. But we're in the middle of all the sports here. Obviously, Fall Classic coming up with the Astros. It is a great, great spot uh, to watch uh, anything. And uh, the Rice Owls coming up this Saturday hosting the Charlotte 49ers, uh, the fourth meeting. Uh, going back to last year, um, oh, one with that, that, that wild game at their place. Uh, they, they come in, though, with an interim coach after uh, letting Coach Healy go. I know you, you knew pretty well, but just speak to that dynamic. With Just because they're coming in with an interim coach by no means, uh, does that mean you're going to get any less of an effort or performance from them, does it? You know, I think it's just the opposite. Like, I, I think they all love Will Healy, and, and I do, but I also know what happens when you fire a coach in the National Football League or major college football. Like, the percent of time that that team rallies and wins is phenomenal. Like it's astronomical. And so what I told the team today is like, what we're up against guys is we're up against a wounded animal that's backed into a corner. And you just have to understand that. But the reality is like, if we end it early, then you end it early. And we are good enough to do that. We are in complete control of the outcome of this game. It's not going to be about them. And so it doesn't matter who the head coach is. He wasn't going to play a snap anyway. Uh, Chris Reynolds, their star quarterback, three-time all-conference. He had some uh, shoulder issues early in the year, but he is a gamer uh, back at, at quarterback for them. Speak to his uh, – there's, there's a little TJ in him that, he, that he, can, he can scramble and make plays, and he goes to all the different arm angles in that W. I agree with you. I, I think that that's really a good comparison, whether you're talking about Asher O'Hara, who was at Middle Tennessee for those years, uh, when you, whether you're talking about Chris Reynolds uh, or TJ. Like, the fight in them, the moxie they have, and, and seemingly the leadership, like that's real. 
And that's what we're going to have to do. But I know this much. Like, no quarterback is very good from their back. And if we can keep putting them on their back ten times a game like we did the other day, that's big-time stuff. And so, again, like, wreck the decision-maker. Like, put constant pressure on him. We're going to be all right on that side of the ball. Again, no matter how talented they are, if we stop the run and hit the passer, good things are going to happen. And they've got three great receivers. Spencer remaining re- reigning. Conference USA freshman year, Bolitnikoff, watch list. But uh, Tucker, about 3,000 career yards. Dubo's great, too. But on their defense, what are they trying to do? they got Prince Bima. It looks like the safety Wayne Jones uh, gets to the ball pretty well. Yeah, they do. They rally to the ball. Uh, and number zero is a kid that we took notice of last year, Marquise Watts. Uh, he's going to actually line up on Clay all the time because he lines up on the offense's left like 99.5% of the time. So that's going to be a cool battle to watch all day long, you know, and, and obviously we'll, we'll bet on Clay serving. So, uh, but that's a good matchup from a guy that's kind of premier in this conference and getting a lot of talk. And then you talk about their linebackers. They got all these transfers in. But then on the back end, they've got a couple moving pieces, right? They've got a, a kid starting at corner, number, uh, number 12, Nolan Grooks. And uh, he went to Wake Forest as a receiver. Then he transferred to Charlotte as a receiver. And he played receiver through five games. And now they threw him at corner. And, and the kid's so athletic and so fast. But you know what? Like, that's a really different move to make in the middle of the season. So there, there's some things on the back end that if we get the protection from these guys that we've been getting and if we get the opportunity to run the ball and, and pound the rock like we have and open up the play action, I think we're going to have a fun day. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Talk to you tomorrow. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Tell me your family and football coach for Ryan Sal's Mike Bilgren. Stay tuned. Uh, coming up, we have the broadcast coming up Saturday. Of course, uh, Families Weekend and Homecoming. That is Charlotte and Rice, 1 o'clock. The glorious 1 o'clock kickoff, 1230, the Houston Methodist pregame. RiceHouse.com, the RiceHouse Game Day app, Varsity Network app, and YouTube and Facebook as well. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Thanks to Heather and her crew for waiting on us, and I uh, appreciate you. We'll be back next Tuesday, next Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. November 1st, game Saturday, uh, Halloween, give out your candy, uh, your, your all your good big chocolate bars, whatever y'all do here around Rice, and then uh, we'll, we'll come back Tuesday. This has been the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. Good night. <laughs>